let's say you're an addict of M&Ms. The number of M&Ms per pack is normally distributed, with a mean of 45 and a standard deviation of 2. What is the probability that a packet contained between 45 and 48 M&Ms? There's absolutely no way that we can answer this until we've converted it into a standard normal situation. Then, and only then, can we use the standard normal table that we've been given. The formula that we use to convert looks like this, where x is the actual number we've been given, which here is 48, mu is the mean, which is 45, and sigma is the standard deviation, which is 2. So we stick these three numbers into the formula, z equals 48 minus 45 divided by 2 equals 1.5, which, come to think of it, looks about exactly right. So we can now go and change the question to this, which means that on the standard normal graph, the area we're searching for is actually this area. And this is the kind of normal distribution problem you should be able to solve with your eyes closed by now. All we need to do is check out where 1.5 and 0 meet up on our table, and we find that the answer is a probability of 0.4332. Sometimes questions start out by giving you a probability, and you get to find the z value that goes along with it. So basically, we just follow the reverse process we used for the regular questions. We start out by finding the probability in the middle of the table, and from there, look for the right z value. These are called inverse normal problems. Here's an example of one of these inverse normal problems we're going on about. So what this question's asking us is, what must the number z be if the area between 0 in the middle and this number z is exactly 0 0.17? If we draw up a quick sketch of the situation, we can figure out that z will be around about here. So we need to look for our 0 0.17 somewhere in the middle of our table. The number that goes along with this is 0 0.44, and that's the answer we're looking for. So that's really the gist of how all inverse normal problems work. Don't think you're completely in the clear yet, however, because there's one final thing NCEA can chuck at you in the exam, and that's when problems in real life are also inverse normal problems. Let's take a look at the M&M's problem. How many M&M's do 75% of packets contain more than? On this diagram, the area that's been given to us looks like this. So we're looking for some number of M&M's, which we've called X, that 75% of packets will have more M&M's than. In other words, that red area we've shaded in has a probability of exactly 0 0.75. Unlike most real life situation problems, we can't begin by converting to standard normal. Instead, think about the red area you're looking at. Since it contains the entire right half, and we know that the right half has an area of exactly 0 0.5, we can cut the right half out of our area so that we're only looking for this. And this has a size of exactly 0 0.25. What we do now is go over to our standard normal table and find the whereabouts in the middle the number 0 0.25 is located. Sadly, there actually is no 0 0.25 because it's in the middle of these two probabilities. This happens all the time and it's no big deal. All we need to do is take the z value that's halfway between the z values that go along was 0 0.2486 and 0 0.2518. Those z values are 0 0.67 and 0 0.68, giving us a middle value of 0 0.675. Since that 0 0.675 is on the left side of the standard normal distribution, it is to be a negative number, which is perfectly fine. So now that we've finally managed to locate the z value, we need to use a formula to find this x value that goes along with it. This time though, we're trying to find x and not z, so we need to go and rearrange it like this. x equals z times sigma plus mu. 
All that's left to do is plug in some numbers that we've already been given for the situation, plus the z value, negative 0.675, that we just found. x equals negative 0.675 times 2 plus 45 equals 43.65, which means that exactly 75% of all packets of M&Ms, according to the numbers we made up, will contain more than 43.65 of those chocolatey delights. How wonderful. Remember, we use a special formula to convert to standard normal distribution. We can convert backwards from standard normal to our real world data.